Right, so finally we've um, we've arrived. We've rigged up. We've rigged up the um, the bivy, and um, I initially had it um, sort of this way, but it was sloping, so I had to turn it on its side, and that's a lot better. So we've got the, all the gear in there. Planning on staying overnight. It's now sort of mid afternoon, and um, so we've got all that in there. All the stuff. We've got a nice bit of air coming through in there. So I've just I've just rigged it. I've got license for three rods this year. This is a gravel pit. This is a deep gravel pit. This has been around for about quite a few years, 40 years. Um, so it's quite deep in places. I don't think it matters where you go. Um, you just got to be doing the basics well. And you know, if you're here long enough, you should run into them. But this this time of the day, when the sun's right up high like that might as well not be fishing really in my opinion but um, as, as the evening sort of draws in night time early morning to about 10 o'clock um, peak time but anyway we're out fishing anyway you never know there might be a bonus bream or something like that because it's so deep and weedy they might be feeding so what we'll do later on tonight um, I've only got two bite alarms so I'm just gonna fish two rods um, probably with some boilies on tonight for the dark hours um, and then I'll switch back, revert back to um, maggot feeder, um, swim feeder, sort of ground bait sort of thing. So I've knocked up some ground bait. I've got um, all sorts in there, luncheon meat. I've got hemp. I've got crushed up boilies. I've got ground bait. I've got uh, some sweet corn in there. Might be some bits of sweet corn in there. There's maggots in there. ringers in there as well two mils and six mils all in there now the rods I'm using um, these are old rods I've got I find they're they're okay for this for this sort of tench fishing and um, yeah basically you know I'm fishing one in quite close I've got one in about the middle and I've got one there's a like there's you see that weed on there there's some sort of banks there some sort of shelf of sandy banks or whatever they are quite weedy I've got one close to that just there so I've got one two three so we're fishing at all the different ranges but like you say I'm not expecting anything I'm not expecting anything but if you're fishing maggots you might run into something like a rod or a roach or something like that big pike in here which is primarily why I bought the ticket but they've also got some good tension here as well a few carp um, but um, yes, we've got a big landing net just in case, um, you know, as a precaution. But the true, the true net is just hiding up here, look, just on the reeds. And um, what I'll do, I'll switch on the other camera, and um, I'm just going to start um, just baiting up where I'm fishing, basically, putting a bit of loose feed, not too much. Just going to be putting a few of these out there. And that's it. Alright, I'll switch it over. Right, so we're just gonna um very dangerous thing, we're just gonna look for I'm not expecting everyone to get a little down there. You can put the other bit. Just put on the top next door on that. Submerged to prevent that. The other rod tips got a lot bigger rings, you see, they can deal with it. So I'm not too worried about them. But this Avon rod, this one in the middle here, you know, I've had that nearly 30 years, that rod. 35 maybe. Chub and all sorts on it. And um, you can see how deep it is going off down there. So we're just, at the minute, we're just sort of mitigating problems and went. Got plenty of ground bait and stuff, but I don't want to chuck too much crap in straight away. But 
you want to sort of build the swim up a little bit Whew. and see if something see if something gets low Really use this rod, but I wouldn't show it rods to you, so I've ended up um, this is what I'm using. So I've got to be a bit careful with it because it's, it's a um, it's a carp feeder. So it might be overloading a bit, so but it might be good enough for this. It's a few maggots there. Okay, so see how the line catches around all these rod rings straight away. I think we'll put them there. So you've got a slightly heavier roll for this, so I've got to be a bit careful. <laughs> so there. You can see there's a leader on here. I'm thinking that's what, right. yeah. See it come out alright, but so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna snip that leader knock down a little bit. So you can see that sort of bloody fiasco. We start using the wrong bloody spot rolls, you see the bloody fiasco. Tip. I can. I was planning on using one of the heavier rods, you see, but I just. I hadn't used. I just felt sorry for this rod. I hadn't used for 30 years. I just felt like I was. Um, let's try again. Get the general idea anyway. I don't want to sort of use up all my battery. Oh my god. So there's only one thing to do sometimes. Stella. Cheers. Not sure what this will do for the hydration levels, but. So just a quick tip, so I swapped over from the um, swim feeder to a maggot feeder, just on a little clip, All right, just rebaiting up with the maggots going on, I mean they were, they'd not been touched, but we've just got one fake above, um, goes over the knot basically, near the eye, that's just a fail safe, if there's a lot of little roach and stuff there just picking them off, um, you've always got one bait there which the tension would pick up. So you've got one, two, three, four on there. That's probably enough. And all I would say is just with the maggot, so he doesn't wriggle off the barbless hook, just put it through the head. You put it through the other way, they tend to wriggle off. There's just a little tip there. Just like that. And all we do, we just take the a cap off. Yeah. 
and sprinkle some in. You can put some tape around there and stuff like that to stop them from. But I generally just sort of hold them. Just sort of hold them from sort of put the lid back on so you don't tread on tread on it when you walk away and kick them all over the bloody floor. So just got to break things down and do them slowly. So we're looking just for a little simple chuck, not not far out. That's what we're looking for. Rod tip, it's got tangles, little chuck. Chuck, like. That's it. Bite alarm. Not too loud, so you just so you startle everybody in the lake. Just enough so you can hear something. The bobbin on. Got drag set perfectly. So it can go. Without too much chaos. There you go, there you go. But this this time of the day, we, we're just fishing, we're just getting, you know, we're, we're, we're ready, you know, as if it was the, the boats were there. But this time of day, you can just, you know, you've got to be so up, uptight, you can just sort of relax because, you know, have a snooze, have a beer, cook some food, because you know the boats aren't going to be there this time of day. You might get something, you might get a surprise, it does happen. But more often than not, that's like the evening, and the early parts of the morning, which are, which are prime time. So there you go, there you go. The top tip, it's with the maggot through the head. So you don't wiggle off the hook, off a barbless hook. So we've just um, rebaited and um, I've got two maggot feeders and I've got one swim feeder. And I'm just handballing the food bits of ground bait just on, you know, just very close in, a couple of rod lengths out is where one of the rods is. The other one's sort of bang in the middle a lot further out. And this one's a bit far further out to the right there. So we'll just sort of check the bait. The bait has a bit stayed on there. So it's just not much happening at the minute, but you do get that. There you go. Gonna swap over for tonight. I'm gonna put two and boilies on. So whether I keep the same rig on, so I've got some boilie screws and things like that, I might be able to do that. So it might be quite a quick sort of changeover. Got a big boilie down there. I've got these um what are the 18mm ones? These um I've got some Scopex squid as well, 12mm. The thing about the Scopex squid is that I've noticed when you you know when you wind them back in after a few hours they go like this pearly white colour and I think that's good for when you're fishing in weedy areas weedy waters I think the tench can sort of see them a bit fish can actually it helps visual it's a visual thing not just a scent thing but it's a visual thing as well so I think that's that's good about the scopex squid and I've got my maggots just down there you see in the corner they're in the shade there's some air coming past them as well as we're in here it's just very it's cool it's in the shade but it's quite humid in here so i'm just trying to keep them at them in optimum condition because when they start to go they really do go maggots do what I try, it's got, i've got a point there i just want to try and keep them as long as possible some sticky additive in there to help it bind. So I don't need to compress it down too much. Or it will 
Won't come out of the bike feed. See with this, it don't matter if you if you cast it in the wrong place because you don't use you need a big spawn. Someone else coming down fishing. Use a big spawn and you stuff it. in his mouth as well. So, well I'm, I'm absolutely amazed on how good he is. It is clear though. I'm amazed how fucking brilliant he is. But see you quite good in here, or it used to be. I was here in 2001. I had five fish in about a morning. And I had two fish over 20 over 20 pounds. And the other fish were a double figure. That was spectacular. I was fishing about a rod length out. And I couldn't keep the rods in the water. It's a big pike I don't think it's as good as it used to be, but there'll be, there'll be one or two of them still in it. It's like this. It's so deep, you see. It's so big and so deep. There's a lot of natural food in here, so you always get a lot of bream and, and tench in here. So they'll just eat them. Perch. I don't think it's as good as it used to be though. How many times have you heard that? Right, so we've rebaited. We've rebaited. Rebaited. Um, just wait. Simple as that. I've got a, I'm trying a bit of fake sweet corn with some maggots on the middle rod, I think. So I've got one right in close. I've got one out in the middle. I've got one well, on the shelf of that weed just over there. So we've gone bump, bump, bump like that. Bloody pike. Never gonna believe this. I was just um pinging this out with some ground bait and I wound it in. I wound it in and I noticed there was a pike there. And um, so I baited it up, chucked it out, wound it in again here. The pike was probably over there, it's really clear today. And I wound it in here. He come at lightning speed and fucking grabbed it. He grabbed it and just ran off with it underneath the underneath the rods. He must have took a bit of line. I never seen anything like it. It just proves, goes to show you, that when them fish are hungry and when they're in the mood, 
he was he was he must have been there when he saw it and the swim feeder was over there just a metal simple metal cane swim feeder and he grabbed it and took it thought it was food so what does that tell you about buying all these fancy lures go fishing with a fucking cage feeder mate you'll get them on that they're in the mood you just won't believe it it's either not a lot of food for him or he was only about five or six pound but but he was sort of hanging around here just to sort of say oh oh you're a roach fisherman and you're gonna you're gonna bring me my dinner they sort of seem seem bloody tame these things He was flaring his nostrils then, was flaring his mouth to... There he is, he's again back again. Where is he? Let's look. Pikey's grabbed my bloody... Um, Grab my bloody um, gah. maggot slut. Bloody thing. Yeah, fuck my rig up now, ain't you? All right, right. So here we are in the um, in the bivvy. Just um, gone down to two rods, fishing boilies. Two boilies. One's on a gravel bar. Another one's a couple of rod lengths out in front. And um, that's gone about just about 10 o'clock. Well, it's just gone. And um, alarm is set for four. So we'll go back to three rods. And um, yeah, so it's just, this is it. You know, let's get some sleep and um, see if there's some um, fish either tonight or um, some fish in the morning. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Right, it's probably my biggest tinge. That's a nice one. is a fine tench. It's about five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning and that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Absolutely superb. So I gotcha. Absolutely beautiful. Poor little, lovely little fish. Right, let's put him back. It's all right. Little bullet. Little torpedo. Oh, I was just saying, sort of, just what's the time? Just then giving up. And nearly 5.30. 5.30 in the morning. So where are we? We're just, um, that pike's back. Down here. It's cracking on for six o'clock at the minute. Isn't that lovely? 
the sun's just as you can see. So we've just got lucky really. I've do I don't think the conditions have been perfect. However, we've managed a tench of about five pound or so. And that came at 5.30. So you probably, well, could be five and a half pound, you never know. But um, over the moon, it's um, fought really hard on the um, on the rod there and um, I'm just trying to think yeah there's the, the braid uh, and um, yeah so I've just got just got lucky really I sort of um, there's some sort of a, a um, you have to excuse me because I'm sort of I've just woken up really I'm sort of half asleep there's a um, a sandbar gravel bar along here as you can see by this this weed there and i literally just you know i've been fishing one in short one in the middle one at the bar and um it come right on the edge of that on the on this weed shelf here just sort of over here a bit of a miscast really and that was like oh that'll do i've been fishing boilies all night had two line bikes and um so i've now i've now moved the rods fishing maggots and I'm, I'm moving. I've moved them to the edge of this shelf here. All of them I have. So it's sort of given me the confidence that you know that's where they're sort of likely to be most active is um, them sort of places. So there you go. There you go. Lovely morning. I've got a mouth like Gandhi's flip flops. There's a little bit of mist there. As the, as the heat is starting to come down off the sun whacking into the cold water but um, the water, it's not it's not been ideal the water, if you look at the water that's it's crystal clear that's not my preferred so I'm probably going to go on a different lake um, either tonight or tomorrow because it's just been a little bit too you know but we'll see but we've had one out anyway so it, it proves it proves we've got the we've got the technique right. So it's just now it's a question of getting lucky with the weather and fish feeding and stuff like that. But it's um, can't see any. Yeah, we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in again, in again, in again. sort of fish. Where's the hook? That's a hook on the bar. He's got the hook out I think. Seems like a goat's tail. There we go. Oh Another beautiful tench. They are beautiful. That's number two. I lost another one. So, right. Don't seem too, too well, but they are absolutely gorgeous. Is that a female one? They are beautiful. Beautiful fish, right? He's gone back. <laughs> Same spot where I um, I fluffed one. Look at this shit. Elo Elo. What's got up? Where is he? There he is. That's got a good size eel, that is. Look at that. An eel. There he is.
Right, get the distorger. 